Hello, my name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our geometry skill. Today is our day number 12. Let's take a look at the problem we have for today. We have we are given a picture here. Something like this. This is 50 degrees, this is 30 degrees we are told, this is 60 degrees, and this is x degrees, this angle. Let's move the x a little higher. This is x degrees, this is 50 degrees. Question simply is how much is x? How much is x? I want you to pause the video. Solve the problem yourself, do whatever it is that you need to do, and then uh, resume it after you have solved it, okay? I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause and unpause. Alright. How do we do how do we go about it? We do not know these these angles. We do not know these ang this angle and that angle. We do not know them. Let me redraw this picture here a little bit better. Because I, I drew it too, too small and too in a crowded way. I'm gonna redraw the same picture. So, 30 and 60, and is that right? It doesn't matter. And then let's call this 50 and x, 50 and x degrees. There you go. How do we go about it? We do not know this angle and we do not know this angle. So what, how did you how did you tackle it? The question, the answer is it doesn't matter what this angle is and what this angle is. Why? Because they are equal to each other. This angle equals this angle because they are called vertical angles. Vertical angles are equal. So that's the first thing you have to understand. Vertical angles are equal. I have not given you answer choices yet, I have not given you question yet. This was a problem number three. Question is, what is the value of x? And the answer choices that are given to us are 20, 25, 30, 40, and 45. Let's give this let's give these two angles some name. But they are equal to each other. So let's call this, let's call this uh, y and z. All right? Okay? No, it's not okay. You have to understand that algebra. This is algebra and geometry together because we're going to solve. Uh, we're going to set up an algebraic equation and solve for it. Algebra is a language, and when you say something y and something z, it has a meaning. What does it mean when you call something x and something? If you call something y and something z, what you're telling me is that. This angle has absolutely nothing to do with this angle. They have no bearing on it, they have no resemblance with it, they have no relationship with it. None of that is true because we just said that they are equal. Well, if they are equal, then if you are going to call this y, then this must also be called y. They cannot have different names because they are equal. If I am going to call this top angle A, if you are going to call the top angle A, if this is A, then this one also has to be A because they are equal. You can call them anything you want. It doesn't matter what you name. It doesn't have to be y. Just because this is x does not mean that this has to be y. There is no law against it. If you call it something else, I'm, I'm going to call it, what should we call them? I'm going to call it hippo. There you go. So here, 30 degrees plus 50 degrees plus this hippo guy equals 180. We know that because it's a triangle. This, 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 this forms a triangle, right here, this is a triangle, and we know that some of the angles in a triangle is 180. What else do we know? We also know that in the bottom triangle, the sum of the three angles has to equal 180. So x plus 60 plus hippo also equals 180. 
So if this equals to 180 and this equals to 180, that means the two, 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 two quantities are equal to each other. Let's put them here. That means 30 plus 50 plus this hippo guy must equal x plus 60 plus hippo. Where did this hippo come from? I'm just being silly obviously. I'm just trying to make a point here that sometimes students have a tendency of freaking out if, if they see a variable with a strange name for some strange and inexplicable reason. They have this uncontrollable, ur uncontrollable urge to see a y here just because they see an x here. If you put an a or a b or an alpha or a beta they freak out. It doesn't matter. It's just a name. It's just a name. You can name it anything you want because it's your problem. You're solving it. So what happens? These two angles play no role at all. They drop out because they, they appear in both sides of the equation. So if you subtract this quantity from both sides, it drops out. Now we want to do, do is solve for x. Subtract 60 from both sides. If you subtract 60 from x si both sides, then, then this 60 would drop out. And on, the, on this side, all we are left with is x, which is 50 plus 30 plus 50, which is 80 minus 60, while voilà, x is 20. Now, what you have to understand is that we did not need to make it so complicated. We made this question unnecessarily complicated. Here's a quicker way, here's a direct way. Because the way we did this problem just now was a little bit of a childish way. Here's, here's a little grown up way. Grown up way, a little bit more mature way is this, okay? Grown up way is to realize that these two angles, and I don't even have to put a mark there, you just look at them and you realize, you realize that these two angles are equal. If this angle equals this angle, and we know that some of these three angles, 50 plus 30 plus this angle is 180, and some of x plus 60 plus this angle is 180, and these two angles are equal. Therefore, the sum of these two must equal the sum of those two. That's the more direct way. So therefore, 30 plus 50 must equal x plus 60. Because this angle plays no role. It appears in both sides. It's going to disappear. And all you have to do is to subtract 60 from both sides to get you get your x. And therefore x equals, this 60 drops out, and x equals, just like before, 30 plus 50 minus 60, which is 20. Very good. That's all. Let's do one more problem, shall we? Let's do one more problem. Problem number four. In, in case you're wondering why it says three here, because I started solving problems from yesterday, from day number 11, and we did two of them yesterday, I'm just continuing the numbers. Problem number three. Let's do one more, shall we? Problem number four. Let's see what we have for the next problem. Next problem is a little interesting. We are given a line here. This is 40 and this is x minus 30. Answer choices that we are told are A, B, C, D and E. 90, 140, 150, 160 and 170. The question simply is, how much is x? I want you to pause the video at this point. I want you to pause it, solve for x yourself. When you have the answer, then and only then, resume the video. Do not continue watching it because there is no point in it. I want you to solve it yourself. I'm going to give you five seconds to pause and unpause. There we go. So what do we do here? Well, we know that a straight line makes 180 degrees. This is a straight line. Right here, a straight line, which is half a circle, makes 180 degrees. A straight line, lines, make 180 degrees. In other words, the straight lines are comprised of 180 degrees. And our 180 degrees is made up of x minus 30, the angle on this side, which is this first angle here, and 40 degrees, right there. And this must equal 180, because that's your total, those are the two angles. We are told that the first angle, I shouldn't have put this on the inside part, because now it looks annoying here. And if you want to look at it, look at the bottom here. This is your first angle here, and this is your second angle. This is 40 degrees. The first angle was x minus 30. That's, that's how much it is. We are told that it's x, it equals x minus 30. The question is what the hell is 30, 
what is x? So we just have to solve for x. Subtract 40 from both sides first, and you're going to get x minus 30 equals 140, and then to get rid of the negative 30, we have to add 30 to both sides. And x would equal 170. x would equal 170 is the answer x equals 170 and I'm going to convince you here I'm going to show you here why x equals 170 because you see x equals 170 I'm going to show you here this part is 40 if this part is 40 then this remaining part has to be 140 it has to be 140 but how can we make 140 if we are told that it is x minus 30 what would x have to be to what what number in other words what number minus a 30 will give us 140 that's the question the answer of course is 170 170 minus a 30 will give us the 140 that we're looking for that's right x would have to be 140 uh, x would have to be 170 because 170 minus a 30 gives us 140 and this angle has to be 140 because the other one is 40 and 40 plus 140 gives us a straight line of 180 that's all I will see you tomorrow on day number 13. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, either over the internet via Skype or face to face for GRE, GMAT, SAT, or algebra, geometry, statistics, calculus, whatever you have there, go to any of these website addresses and send me an email. Or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow.